to this special webinar in the lead up to World Cancer Day 2019, which is observed on the 4th of February every year. We have a very distinguished panel of experts with us today to help us understand better how to turn the cancer tide. But before moving ahead, I would like to invite dental surgeon and public health expert, Dr. Vismay Sharma, to dedicate this World Cancer Day webinar to the memory and legacy of her mother, Dr. Veena Sharma. Over to you, Dr. Vismay. Good evening, everyone. Before we start our uh, today's World Cancer Day webinar, I would like to share briefly about my mother and pay tribute to her in the memory of whom is this webinar is dedicated. She was born and brought up in Uttar Pradesh, India, and she researched new screening technique on some aspects of chemotherapy and chemoprophylaxis in experimental leishmaniasis from Central Drug Research Institute, Lucknow. Her work was appreciated and uh, well documented in several journals, as well as uh, he was also, she was also a researcher. And then after, uh, apart from her researcher skills, she was also an eminent educationist and served as a distinguished teacher, as well as principal and vice principal in several schools and degree colleges. She also played active role in to stop the tobacco abuse among the teenager in society, which is, I guess, all of know that it is a major risk factor of cancer and she consistently seeded the attitude in youngsters to never give up towards life. As this spirit towards life and the fight back attitude of her uh, helped her to bravely fight the uh, battle of cancer and she passed away on a few years back uh, giving us some uh, major uh, uh, strengths and uh, teachings that we carry forward today. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Visme, and salutes to the indomitable spirit of Dr. Veena Sharma. For the information of those who are there on the webinar as panelists or participants, this webinar is being streamed live on CNS Facebook page www.facebook.com slash cns.page and will also be streamed on YouTube channel. So if for any reason, any of the participants are having any logging issues, please follow us on facebook.com slash cns.page to watch live streaming of the webinar. A few quick housekeeping announcements. I request the participants to keep sending their questions and comments even as panelists present and not wait till the end. You can click on the Q&A box, which you must be seeing on your screen and then type in your question. If you wish to speak, please click on the virtual hand you see on your screen once the open session begins. I now welcome our guest moderator for today, Ashok Ramsarup, who is a widely acclaimed award-winning journalist based in Durban, South Africa. He was a senior producer at South African Broadcasting Corporation. Over to you, Ashok. Namaskar ji, greetings from the port city of Durban, South Africa. Cancer is one of the major killers throughout both the developed and developing world, including my country, South Africa, where an estimated 100,000 people are diagnosed with cancer annually. According to a report, cancer causes more deaths in South Africa than HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. Even for breast cancer, the five-year survival rate is as low as 40% in South Africa, and in 2018, an estimated 9.6 million lives were lost to cancer globally, 26,000 deaths daily. The annual economic cost of cancer is staggering too. It was estimated to be 1.16 trillion US dollars in 2010. And yet, not only several cancer rates are at alarming levels in our countries, but risk factors for different cancers are also not being addressed fast enough to avert untimely deaths. Let us hear more from our panel of experts to let the world know if we are on track to reduce the cancer disease burden and what more can be done to accelerate progress towards averting premature death due to cancers globally. Today's webinar panel includes 
Dewey Cook Bailen, the World Cancer Day campaign manager at the Union for International Cancer Control, UICC, the official organizer of the World Cancer Day global campaign, along with Yannick Romero, senior advocacy manager at UICC. Dr. Vien Viet Nguong, Director of National Young Hospital Vietnam. Dr. Nguong is also the head of Vietnam's National TB <coughs> Program and Honorary Associate Professor at University of Sydney, Australia, followed by Professor Dr. Surya Kant, Head of Respiratory Medicine Department at King George's Medical University. Dr. Surya Kant is an acclaimed tobacco control advocate and author of a textbook on lung cancer. He is president-elect of the National College of Chest Physicians, India, and has been decorated with several national and international lung health awards. And finally, Dr. Pooja Ramakant, Associate Professor in the Department of Endocrine Surgery, King George's Medical University, KGMU. Dr. Pooja Ramakant is a noted breast cancer expert and is also Associate Editor of the Indian Journal of Surgery. I now cross to Shobha Shukla, Executive Director, Managing Editor, CNS, Citizen News Service. Thank you, Ashok. Before our panelists begin the discussion, I, we have a small poll, a quiz poll for the participants. I want the participants to answer a question they can see on their screen. Uh, the question is, which is the most common cancer? Actually, there are two correct answers lung cancer and breast cancer because both of them had the maximum number of cases in 2018. There were 2.09 million cases of each of them. Okay, now we have a second question coming up. The question is most cancer deaths occur because of, yeah, time is up now. The correct answer is lung cancer and 69% got that correct. In fact, 1.76 million people died of lung cancer in 2018. Okay, now we are back to the webinar and spearheading today's discussion are Thuy and Yannick from UICC. I would request both of them to elaborate upon this year's campaign of I am and I will in the context of the broader issues around cancer control. Thank you very much for that, Shoba. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much to Citizen News for bringing together this extremely worthwhile discussion on the global cancer burden. We're very pleased to have the opportunity to join with you all today, including with some of our UICC members, as we head into World Cancer Day this Monday, 4th of February. So as Shoba mentioned, my colleague Yannick here is the UICC Senior Advocacy Manager, and he's been attending last week's uh, discussions at the WHO Executive Board, and I'm sure um, the Q&A part of the call will benefit more so from his insights and experiences. But firstly, I'd like to open the discussion by talking more generally about what and in particular, the ways in which organizations and media can be a powerful force in raising awareness and lifting the public health literacy and mainstreaming, mainstreaming the conversation around cancer, as well as maintaining um, it as an issue on the global health agenda. And I think these are very important actions in contributing to reducing the global cancer burden and preventing untimely deaths, one of the issues that we're talking about today. World Cancer Day is a global initiative led by the Union for International Cancer Control that it is one day within the calendar year, which the international cancer community, businesses, government, uh, organizations, media and the public can come together and speak with one voice around cancer. So our aim is to empower this generation and the next generation with information, education and knowledge. So it was really great to see that some of that, those efforts are paying off with, uh, with, through the poll that you just saw. It's great to see some of the, the results there. So we're doing this 
through pursuing discussions like the one we're having today, where um, we believe that World Cancer Day is a critical opportunity to engage with organizations and the media to ensure informed coverage, um, which continues to break down myths and misconceptions overcome stigma and reduce fears around cancer. So this Monday 4th of February marks the start of a very exciting new campaign for us, I Am and I Will. And I Am and I Will is a new theme that the team here at UICC, including Yannick, we, uh, we were able to bring together this new theme, um, which calls for commitment and action and acts as an important reminder that we all have a significant role to play. So this year's World Cancer Day um, is highlighting the significant opportunity to save lives through early stage detection, uh, screening and diagnosis. We know that many cancers are amenable to early detection including breast, cervical, colorectal and oral cancers. And we also know that cancers, when presented earlier, it is easier to treat, manage, and even cure. So there is much that we can be, um, much that can be done at a policy level to achieve um, improved access to early detection, screening, and diagnosis, including improving awareness levels among the public, as well as among um, the healthcare professionals, particularly at the primary care level. Um, and there's also the opportunity to implement cost-effective population-based screening as well as strengthening referral pathways and um, pathology services to minimize uh, time to diagnosis. But there are also many ways that individuals can be empowered as well, taking part in uh, available screening programs, understanding and being aware of signs and symptoms of cancer, and making sure to seeking medical help as early as possible are simple but yet very powerful ways um, and measures that can be taken by individuals. So early detection, screening and diagnosis saves more lives, improves quality of life and reduces the cost and complexity of treatment. And this is a powerful message that we hope that you will share this World Cancer Day through your far reaching platforms. So the World Cancer Day Global Press Release is available to all media and to all UICC member organizations. And I'll make sure that that gets to uh, Shoba at Citizen Needs for Distribution. That is accompanied by country-specific case studies, including the United States, India, South Africa, uh, and Brazil, in terms of further background information about each country's experiences with early detection. Um, so I'll, I'll conclude there, but I encourage you all to take Monday as an opportunity to create deep discussions and in-depth dialogue around um, cancer. And uh, I invite every and each and every one of you to join in the I Am and I Will campaign so that these discussions that we're having help us move forward in the progress against cancer. Thanks. Our next panelist is a specialist, Dr. Nong. Congratulations, Dr. Nung, for being conferred the Honorary Associate Professor title by University of Sydney last month. With an estimated 2.09 million new cases in 2018, lung cancer is not only the most common cancer globally, but it's the deadliest of all also. Dr. Nung, could you please tell us more about this and also if there is any connect between tuberculosis and lung cancer? Hello, yes. everyone. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Thank me. you very much. Um, I'm uh, very pleased to join you today. And we look forward for the one uh, cancer day on the Monday. I would like to share with you some of the lung cancer with the team. Lung cancer is a severe, but doable. That means we can do something about it. And uh, we will share with you lung cancer epidemiology. We have survey uh, um, recently is that lung cancer is most common in men, but breast cancer, of course, in uh, women. So that is uh, both uh, answer is uh, is right if we uh, uh, categorize in the same. And we can share with you innovation and uh, uh, for reducing lung cancer burden. We are thinking about uh, 
uh, innovation thinking, technology, and approach. And we uh, introduce you something in Vietnam. As you know, in, uh, in the world, in lung cancer is the most common in the many countries in terms of incident and mortality. We can see that more than 2 million cancer happen a year and 1.76 million deaths in 2018. In Vietnam, we have uh, lung cancer estimate incident reaching about uh, 34.5 thousand uh, by 2020. Uh, May is 22 and 23,000 and females about uh, more than 11,000. And we can see the estimate here. And uh, in the US, we see that's the most deadly cancer in the uh, US, we can see. But um, in average, five years survival is uh, still limited about the 20%. But we can see if we um, stitching is early and the uh, later stage is uh, very different. We can see here if the uh, very early we can reaching the five years survival very high compared to the less uh, state. So the key uh, point here we should have early detection. So we can share with you the three point of the innovation how to do with the lung cancer and to reduce the lung cancer burden. Number one is innovation of thinking. Everything is a chain if we think the rightly. So uh, here lung cancer is a brain uh, preventable and uh, treatable. And the smoking is a main risk factor and need to be stopped for everyone. That is uh, very important for everyone, not for no doctor and uh, for patient. If the patient is very late uh, state. Early detection is the key and don't miss this opportunity. That is of course a difficult uh, lung cancer is the most difficult uh, one. It is not cheap, but we can optimal use resources to deal with the lung cancer. The second is the innovation of the technology. We now recommend that the low dose CT screening can detect cancer, uh, lung cancer earlier and can reduce the mortality of the lung cancer. And uh, many uh, uh, technology like endoscopy intervention Clinical stretching genetic diagnosis can uh, do very um, um, accuracy. That means uh, we apply um, how to say the uh, uh, very uh, um, deep diagnosis with the multi modality of the lung cancer treatment like surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, target therapy, procutaneous ablation, and so on. So that is uh, very important for the technology to, uh, to, to, to come and now uh, apply. But all the technology is very modern, uh, can, cannot be used if uh, we not uh, bring to the patient who needs more. So the question is how to make service available for all the people in needs at all level. So we can share with you so in Vietnam, we use a TB and lung disease network from the central to root level for lung cancer detection, treatment, and care management. We, uh, we call the practical approach to lung health with the uh, standing uh, the PAL. And here we can see the um, dramatically uh, clear um, technology uh, at the moment from the uh, 1970s at the present. It's a many option for the uh, cancer uh, treatment. So we uh, share with you a strategy for lung cancer management in Vietnam. Number one is strategy for lung cancer. We do with the two points. Number one is optimal use of modern technology for lung cancer diagnosis and treatment is not cheap. So uh, by watch, by lung cancer network from the center to root level uh, in order to provide a comprehensive care and treatment for all. We emphasize it for all, it's not such a for uh, the few people. So uh, doing a strategy with the benefit, our patient can assess modern technique for comprehensive care and the treatment for lung cancer. And uh, without making the overloading in the central level and healthcare system, and especially a reasonable cost, because uh, we decentralize some center we're doing with all the technique for the lung cancer, but the, the roots level can do with the care management at some, uh, later.
So National Lung Hospital, we develop, establish a National Lung Cancer Center doing with the Lung Cancer Network. And uh, one thing we would like to uh, uh, urge all the people, population, that the tobacco control is very important for lung cancer. And uh, we uh, take this opportunity to tell all the people again that the tobacco is the main risk factor for the lung cancer. In Vietnam, we do uh, many things active in the tobacco control from 2004 and uh, uh, so on. And uh, we make uh, some changes here in the overall reduction of the five year of the uh, smoking uh, rate in uh, Vietnam. And we can see in the second hand smoking in various places and also uh, doing with uh, some progress and uh, in terms of the prevent the lung cancer. So the key message we can would like to share that slogan of the wound cancer day this year is the, um, I am and I will uh, to make the people is to do the action. But the top action is to stop smoking. In Vietnam, lung cancer reaching the more than 40, uh, 34,000 uh, K by 2020, that is a high burden. Early diagnosis is key for survival of the lung cancer patient and can be done by the low dose CT screening program. A lung cancer patient need to have comprehensive treatment plan with a multiple modality component depend on many factors. But uh, uh, one thing is comorbidity is important. We need to emphasize such as a tuberculosis. There are some people got lung cancer and also tuberculosis because of weak immunity health due to the cancer therapy. It could be misdiagnosis. So we would like to emphasize that doctors should be aware of that. And Vietnam, we use lung cancer network based on the TB network showing the effectiveness in the providing our lung cancer patient with comprehensive care and the treatment management. That is what uh, we would like to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for a very lucid presentation, Dr. Nong. As we know already, breast cancer shares the stage with lung cancer in being the most common occurring cancer, with nearly 2.1 million newly diagnosed cases in 2018 globally. Also, more than 25% of all cancers diagnosed in women are of breast cancer. I now invite noted cancer specialist, Dr. Pooja Ramakan, to please tell us how grave the problem is and what are the obstacles in its early diagnosis and treatment in women. I repeat women, as contrary to popular belief, men too can get breast cancer. Thank you. So I was talking about that. Uh, I'm talking about a deadly disease, which is ranked number one in the race for cancer. In the race, when somebody wins, like Usain Bolt, he's a winner. But in this case, the winner is a loser. So breast cancer, unfortunately, has ranked number one among the females. And if you see overall, all the cancers, it counts to 25%. That means around 1.6 million new cases are diagnosed every year. If you see the age adjusted rate, maybe is as high as 25 per 1 lakh women. If you see the mortality, people dying out of it is 12 per 1 lakh women. So you see this is a deadly cancer. And if you talk about worldwide, if you see the first topmost red column, breast cancer is most common worldwide. The most common cause of death due to cancer is also because of breast. Lung counts number two. However, if you see in more developed countries, breast cancer is most common, but it is diagnosed in early stage. So it is not the most common cause of death. So lung, bronchus and trachea are the most common cause followed by breast and colorectum. However, in less developed countries like ours, breast is the most common culprit as cases and as mortality factor both. So it is a high time to think about it, what to do. To reduce this incidence. If you see in 1990 Lancet Oncology they publish if you see by colors if you see red orange or dark orange it means higher incidence of cancer. So in 1990 there's no orange at all in India. You see all yellow blue so the cancer incidence was low. However in 2016 you see the whole India map has been replaced by almost pink orange even red very high incidence of cancer. So something has happened which has changed the overall trend 
if you see the incidence. So our burden of problems are the cancer incidence is rising. It is happening more in younger women. Cancers are very aggressive in biology when they happen in young age. Women present late to us. Unfortunately, 50 to 70% of patients who present are already in advanced stage or metastatic when they are first diagnosed. And that is directly proportional to reduced survival rate. This happens because of lack of awareness and lack of screening programs and there are many other factors. There are certain factors which are modifiable. Obesity, dietary habits, the sedentary lifestyle is on the top list. If the woman doesn't breastfeed or has low parity or is nulliparous, hasn't given birth, that is also one of the risk factors. Then tubo echo, alcohol in any amount, carbohydrate rich diet is also responsible for carcinogenic mutations. And in the environment, some pollutants like polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And India is unfortunately the top most emitting countries in the world. And this happens, this PAH is present in the coal in the tar like smoking chimneys even in the water even in the cosmetics which the women used so this is even in pesticides so a lot of mutant mutation causing agents are in the environment but all these are modifiable factors you see there's some small amount which are non-modifiable like hereditary cancers but the good thing is that they happen in just five to ten percent so 90 percent of the risk factors are modifiable then if the woman starts menstruating earlier than 12 years of age or has a late menopause after 55 years of age, the estrogen hormone is more, so that is also slightly cancer producing or cancer motivating, so that is, but that's not modifiable. If you see age-wise in India, the most common, if you see the peak of this, it's in the 30s, 40s and 50s. However, in the West, that happens in 50s and 60s. So in India, cancer is happening 10 years earlier compared to the West. We don't know the reasons, but it is happening in the younger age and presenting in an aggressive form. So when the question about this webinar is, are we reducing the burden with passing time? No, not at all. In fact, the burden is rising. So it's an alarm to us. If you see the five-year survival rate in US, it is 90%, such a good survival rate. However, in our country, it is 66%. It is low because of the advanced stage when the women presents. So how can we pick up early stage of cancer? One is by educating women and men. Men do get cancers, however, in small amount, percentage, by self-examination. This is all easily available on Google, free of cost. People can download this, they can circulate this, educate every woman to examine her breast monthly. Know about the breast consistency, any change in the breast, report to the doctor immediately, not wait for months. And then if you cannot, you're not confident about examining your breast, you can have a clinical examination by any doctor, which is useful in developing countries like ours. However, if they can undergo mammography after 40 years or 50 years of age, once in a year, that is good enough. So what can we do to create awareness more about breast cancers? We can talk about it right now as we are doing. We can write, publish articles about it. We can do role plays. It is always good to educate others by humor and by in rolling role plays. We can have patient support groups so that we give moral boost to the patients who suffer and their families who suffer because of cancer. We can do awareness walks that helps, have billboards, advertise everywhere, let everybody know that early stage is directly proportional to early to long survival. We can use children as a medium to propaganda in the family and neighborhood. We can do programs in schools and colleges. We can collaborate with the social workers and the first contact point health workers like Anganwadi workers with whom women are usually in touch. So like we, this is a small amount, I think in just a minuscule effort which we did. We did a breast cancer awareness where all the doctors from different specialities, they came forward, joined hands and we had slogans and talks about breast cancer. So at least it happens in October every year, but we should happen regularly everywhere. We had slogans and we had posters in the college, at the airport, but these are just focal points. It should not be focal. It should be very diffuse and generalized 
awareness so that it's very common. People are not scared of cancer. They are more informative about it. So knowing that cancer exists and breast cancer is on the top list is not enough. We need to be informed and we need to pass our information to others. So with this, I conclude saying that please stay healthy, eat healthy, exercise that helps. Do self-examination of the breast every month. Have knowledge about breast cancer. Please don't be scared or please don't ignore it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and let us remember that the stereotype gender dynamics acts as a roadblock to early diagnosis and treatment. High time we women took our health in our own hands. And thanks, Pooja, for pointing that out. Uh, tobacco has come up over and over again in today's webinar, and tobacco use is a very important and yet avoidable risk factor for cancer and is said to be responsible for more than 20% of cancer deaths. I now request Dr. Surikant to elaborate on the deadly nexus between tobacco and cancer. And yes, before I forget, congratulations, doctor, for being elected as the national president of Indian College of Asthma, Allergy and Applied Immunology. Over to you, Dr. Surikant. So I'm really sorry for being uh, late. So India is thought to be one of the pioneer country in which you will find a lot of prevalence and incidence of the cancer. And if you see the association of tobacco and cancer in this country, and if you will find what is the history of tobacco in this country, so history of tobacco in this country is only way back 16th century. That is around 400 to 500 years back, that's all. So before 500 years, we didn't have any tobacco in this country, and we don't have any problem of cancer in such a huge manner. Uh, can I have my next slide, please? Uh, next one. Okay. So this is the global epidemiology. I think uh, everybody has uh, gone through. This is the global epidemiology of the tobacco. There are uh, around uh, 1,100 million smokers and around 300 million uh, the, the people they are using smokeless tobacco. And it kills, the tobacco kills around 8 million people a year. Of these, 7 million are killed by smokers and rest of the 1 million by non-smokers tobacco users. Next, please. And this is the comparison of tobacco burden in comparison to the global scenario, to the Indian scenario. While 110 uh, crore people are smokers globally, uh, roughly 10% of these are in our country. And similar is the case for the morbidity and mortality due to the smokeless tobacco also. Next, please. So this is the Indian, Indian scenario that uh, the uh, 1 million tobacco related deaths per year and tobacco leading to 25 life threatening diseases and about 40 types of cancer in this country. And 50% of smokers dying due to smoking related illness and world leader in oral cancer. So that's the uh, next please. And this you can see the various forms of tobacco which is prevalent in this country. The smokeless tobacco in the form of pan and tobacco, gutka, baba, kenny, mishri, snuff. These are the various forms, various innovative forms I can say which are which were used in this country. And a lot of smoked tobacco in the form of beedi, cigarette, chillum, hoka, and so on and so forth. Next please. And this you know very well. This is the one a small cigarette can give rise around 7,000 odd chemicals from this. Nothing is useful from this cigarette smoke. Only harmful substances are being produced from this cigarette. Next, please. And we know that due to this tobacco, a lot of health hazards, including the cancer. Next, please. And tobacco is the strongest addiction that also we know, strongest than any other addictive agents like brown sugar, heroin, alcohol, etc. Next, please. And the combined, the tax revenue, this is again, again a you see, uh, contradictory thing. The combined tax revenue collected annually from tobacco products is around 31,000 crores annually. This is the 2015-16 report of India. And according to data, annual medical, medical cost for persons, uh, of course, developing the disease due to tobacco, this is, this is around 1,500 1, 1, crores. So this is contradictory that uh, the three times we are spending more money what whatever we are earning from the revenue from tobacco next please so next please incidence of cancer 
in the world is around 18.1 billion. So that's a huge incidence. Mortality is also used around 9.6 million. And incidence of cancer in India is 1.1 million. Mortality is also huge in this country. Next, please. Now, this is the cancer statistics worldwide. Overall, lung cancer is the top most cancer throughout the world, around 12% cancer. They are the lung cancer. Then number two is the breast cancer. Number three is the colorectal. And then fourth is the prostate. Fifth is the stomach. And sixth is the liver cancer. Next, please. And if you see in the male, lung cancer is again on the top, followed by prostate, colorectal, stomach, and liver. Next, please. The, uh, in female, the contradictory breast cancer is on the top, while colorectal, lung cancer, they are uh, subsequently followed by cervix cancer. Next, please. And if you see the estimated number of people living with cancer in India is around 2.25 million. So that's also a huge number. And risk of developing cancer before the age of 75 years, male is 9.81% and female is 9.42%. And of course, total deaths due to cancer is also a huge number. Next, please. Cancer of oral cavity and lungs account for over 25% of cancer deaths in India. So these are the top heroes as far as the various type of cancer is concerned in this country, in India. Next is the breast and oral cavity. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. So uh, over all most common cancers in India are the breast cancer, oral cancer, cervical cancer, gastric cancer, and lung cancer. These are the top five uh, cancers which are mainly prevalent in both combinedly male and female. Next, please. Lung cancer was the most common cancer in men worldwide. Tobacco smoking is most common prevalent cause of lung cancer. It has contributed 15.5% of new cases diagnosed in 2018. Breast cancer was the most common cancer in women worldwide, contributing 25% of total number of cases diagnosed in 2018. So lung cancer and breast cancer, they remain the top on the men and, female, men and women res, uh, respectively. Now, can we prevent? What are the preventive factors of cancer? This message we have to give on the eve of the uh, World Cancer Day, that uh, can we prevent the cancer? Can we risk, minimize the risk uh, which leads to the cancer? So tobacco is the commonest form, the preventable form, 25-30% responsibility goes for the tobacco for cancer. This accounts for every third cancer death due to cancer and 87% of death due to lung cancer. So compared with the non-smoker, male smoker are 23 times and female smokers are 17 times more likely to develop lung cancer. Diet, uh, changing diet scenario in last three, four decades, globally also and in our country, India also, that's also an important thing. So this account for about 35% uh, cancer related death. So diet is also important. So simple uh, vegetarian diet, uh, green leafy vegetables and uh, fresh food diet, increasing this we can prevent the cancer. This has been seen the non-vegetarian diet is more responsible for more cancers. Infections, especially the viral infections, they're also important uh, preventable cause for the cancer. Next please. The, next please. The number fourth is the environmental pollution environmental factors and out of this environmental pollution is also important outdoor and indoor air pollution and we have seen latest report of WHO that out of the 15 polluted cities 14 are from India even the topmost city is the Kanpur from India so uh, uh, our air pollution is a major concern in this country this is also uh, important for association of cancer so about 5 to 10 percent of all cancer cases are due to genetic defects that we cannot avoid Rest 90-95% are due to environment and lifestyle changes, which can be preventable. So tobacco, diet, infection, obesity, and other factors contribute approximately uh, roughly 30 to 50%. And almost 90% of patients diagnosed with lung cancer, cigarette smokers, and cigarette smoking combined with alcohol intake can synergistically contribute to cancer genesis. Next, please. Diet, obesity, and metabolic syndrome account for roughly one third of cases. So lifestyle modification can also prevent the cancer. Next, please. Now, what treatment modalities we have? Surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. These are the three important mainstays for the treatment. If the patient is operable, then of course the prognosis of cancer is good. Otherwise, it's not good. Other more developing modalities are the immunotherapy, hormone therapy, stem cell transplant, and targeted therapy. Next, please. A word about immunotherapy, cancer cells thrive as it can hide from immune system. Immunotherapy can mark cancer cells, so it is easier for the immune system to find and destroy them. Other immunotherapies boost the immune system to work better against cancer. Routes for immunotherapy can be IV, intravenous, oral, tropical, or even intra-recycle. Next, please. 
So types of immunotherapy can be the monoclonal antibody, which is the most commonly utilized way of immunotherapy, the immune checkpoint inhibitors, the cancer vaccines, which are in very good progress. A lot of research is going on in the last two decades in this field. Other the non-specific immunotherapy can also be tried. Next, please. In conclusion, we can say that cancer is a global epidemic and leading cause of death worldwide. 90 to 95% of cancer is due to preventable causes. Worldwide, cancer now causes more deaths than HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria combined. More than 70% of all cancer-related deaths occur in low- and middle-income countries. Next, please. And of course, these uh, some pictorials. You can see various forms of cancer. This is the most common cancer in the male in India, the oral cancer. Next, please. A few more pictures of oral cancer. Next, please. The tongue cancer, precancerous lesions. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, I think with this uh, various awareness program organized by CNS and other agencies, will create a lot of awareness regarding the prevention modalities of the cancer and we can lead to the cancer-free world in coming future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Surekan, for re-emphasizing upon the need for a tobacco-free world if we want to rein in some of the deadliest cancers as well as many other diseases. Open the question and answer session and invite the participants for their comments and questions. You can click on the Q&A box, which you must be seeing on your screen, and then type in your question. If you wish to speak, please click on the virtual hand you see on the screen. We already have uh, a lot many questions coming in. There is a question from uh, Beryl Osindo to Pooja. Uh, she wants to know if there is a relationship between birth control and any other form of cancer in women, including breast cancer. Yeah, there are two things. One is late childbirth. That is a risk factor for breast cancer directly. Late childbirth means delivering a child after 30 years of age and having less number of children. Like if you have one child or no child, that is a risk for cancer, breast cancer especially. Other thing is using contraceptive pills as birth control pills. So they have also a slight, slight association with breast cancer. Not a very high risk, but Contraceptive pills, oral contraceptive pills have been found to be associated. So because the question didn't mention clearly birth control pills or birth control means the number of deliveries. So I'm answering in both ways. If you need more clarifications, please, you can ask again. Thank you. Uh, the other question from Beryl is for, I think, uh, um, Thuy and Yannick. And uh, she tries, uh, she wants uh, to talk of an issue from the UICC point of view. Uh, she says that uh, intervention approaches are very effective, but my greatest concern is at policy level. I feel that several countries that are unsuccessful in fighting cancer emphasize more on research than clinical practice at policy level. So while we have several publications on cancer and little can clinical intervention, so how are countries with the lowest rates of cancer cases meeting their policy level objectives to everyone, for everyone to gain? Mary Lucindo is one of our health journalists. Uh, and she, she has got a health fellowship from CNS and she's from Kenya. Okay, thank you. Um, I will try to answer the question because it's really complete and there's a lot of uh, different, uh, different parts in, the, in this question actually. Uh, you were mentioning more emphasis on research than in clinical uh, practice. The thing is that it really depends on the politic will uh, from the country. There is no, no one size fits all actually and really depends on the country uh, where is it located geographically and depends on the income setting of the of the country and it I would say it really depends also on the on the cancer plan if there is a cancer plan you know that every country could have uh, a cancer plan or a non communicable disease plan and um, and this uh, and the question of putting more resources in research or in clinical practice is really dependent on the on the on the politics and on the plan itself and it really depends on the cancer burden too so it's a really complex question to answer here and it really also depends on the country uh, where you live and where you look at this publication for instance so our countries with the lowest rates of cancer cases meeting their policy level objective for everyone to gain 
on the research side, side and on the on the clinical practice, it really depends on the on the on the on the policies and the, and the government will to uh, address this question according to the cancer burden. So there is no clear answer to that question. I'm sorry for that, but I'm I'm sure that uh, you could have many different case studies where you put the emphasis on on the clinical practice. Uh, before the clinical, the, before the research, and you have also other case studies in other countries where you could you can find that there is more resources put in the research than in clinical practice, and sometimes you can have both. So it really depends on the on the country. I think so. Thank you. Uh, I am requesting the participants to please send, keep on sending your questions. Click on the Q and A box, which you must be seeing on your screen, and then type your question. Please do not type it in the chat box. And if you wish to speak, please click on the virtual hand you see on the screen. We have a question from Dr. Nalin Nag from Apollo Hospitals India, who wants to know if immunotherapy in new small cell lung cancer can okay. cure the disease. Uh, immunotherapy in non-small cell lung cancer. Actually, we have two types of lung cancer, the non-small lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. In India, the 85% cancer, they are the non-small lung cancer, very common type of cancer. And uh, still immunotherapy is a developing uh, modality for the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer. We don't have uh, a good clinical trials for the response of immunotherapy in non-small cell cancer, but in future we can have more and more response, more and more clinical trials, and then we can only say whether immunotherapy is the real main treatment, effective treatment or not. Okay, uh, we have a question from Zahida from Malaysia. For Dr. Surikant, uh, Zahida wants to know how successful is quitting tobacco? As you yeah. said, it's a very, very, very strong addictive. addictive. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, I personally running my tobacco selling clinic in the King George Medical University, Lucknow, and I know the, if you motivate people uh, by important counseling and psychotherapy and some, of course, drug therapy, we can have the success rate around uh, the uh, 50%. And uh, of course, the 50% success rate uh, following the one year follow up, that's a very good uh, quitting rate. So, and of course, by quitting tobacco, you can have a lot of relief, lot of symptom relief, lot of prevention from, for example, quitting tobacco. This gives you results within art, within art. So, within art, your oxygen level, your energy level, your carbon dioxide level going down. And within 24 hours and within weeks and months, you are getting a lot of loss, uh, good response from quitting tobacco. So quitting tobacco is never late. Even at the age of 65 years, if you're quitting tobacco and smoking, you will get relief. You will get the less chances of risk for developing various cancer and various diseases, which I mentioned earlier, that tobacco can lead to 40 types of heart cancer and 25% of various diseases. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question for Dr. Nong. In fact, there are two questions for Dr. Nong. Uh, uh, Tariro Kutsa from New York wants to know, is there any link between HIV and cancer? And should HIV cure research be integrated with cancer cure research? What is being done for uh, uh, HIV related cancers in terms of treatment? Uh, there are certain cancers which are related with HIV. HIV people are more developing, more chances for developing these cancers. And if you treat effectively HIV, then of course you can prevent the development of these cancers, especially the sarcomas. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Can, yes. can I say something? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The linking between the, um, HIV and cancer, we, we can see if the cancer can uh, develop when uh, the immunity is um, uh, weakness. So um, uh, it is quite difficult to um, uh, recognize and uh, misdiagnosis in uh, even the HIV and uh, tuberculosis uh, because uh, it's lung cancer, uh, for example, uh, the survival is quite short if uh, we uh, provide um, inappropriate uh, uh, regimen for the treatment. I don't have um, the experience on the doing with the treatment, the both um, uh, lung cancer and, uh, and HIV. 
But uh, there is uh, also the, the area we need to uh, interest in, and uh, we can uh, provide later the evidence. Okay, thank you. Yannick wants to ask a question. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a question to Professor Kent. I was a bit surprised about your numbers about preventable cases of uh, cancer, about 90 to 95 percent. So uh, where do you get these numbers? Is it only for one region, for one country? Uh, could you just elaborate, please? Yes, yes, uh, this is variable. Yes, of course, this is variable from geographical area, different geographical area. But in our country, the majority of the cancers, they are preventable cancer. And that's why I say that the majority, 90% cancer can be preventable in this, part of the, uh, in this part of the world that is in India and around, that is the Indian subcontinent. Uh, there may be some areas which may be around 40 to 70 percent, but majority, more than 50 percent cancers, they are the avoidable cancer, the preventable cancer. Genetics has to pay, play, uh, of course, a little role, although it is important because it runs in sometimes in family also. But genetically, um, uh, genetically susceptible people, they are more susceptible for cancer, but genetics always not the guarantee for developing the cancer. But due to the some certain kind of tobacco exposure, environmental exposure, and certain type of diet patterns. They are the usually lifestyle obesity. These are the usually factors which are preventable. And in this part of, in this Indian subcontinent, uh, they contribute around 90%. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Khalisha, who's a representative from Transgender Network. Uh, is there a gender messaging for World Cancer Day that also includes transgenders? So people from UICC, would you uh, like to say something on that? Oh, that's a very interesting question. With World Cancer Day, um, and if I understand correctly the question, it's uh, whether or not there's specific messaging around uh, cancer oh, and nice. the transgender community. Um, so we don't have specific uh, messaging around that. Um, World Cancer Day, we have eight core key messages in our campaign for the next three years. And that they are very universal in their nature, um, but we do t speak and talk and discuss a lot about vulnerable populations and underserved populations that are not able to access uh, treatment and primary care and uh, health systems and so there's certainly very universal themes that will touch on uh, transgender uh, populations um, who may not necessarily have the um, access for example uh, to, to treatment um, and so certainly there will be some of uh, those key issues that may be interesting uh, for um, for this question. Uh, these eight core key issues include equity in access, it includes prevention, it includes um, reducing myths, misconceptions and stigmatization around cancer, uh, uh, collaboration and working together uh, to increase and improve um, cancer outcomes, um, as well as a handful of other core key issues as well. So I hope that answers the question. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and Dr. Pooja Ramakan, uh, do, is, uh, do you have any experience in your clinical practice or some data uh, about transgender and breast cancer? Actually, transgender is very few patients I've managed myself. Less than 10, I can say, when I've managed and seen thousands. They do present with breast cancer or breast lump. They are managed in the same way exactly. So cancers don't have any gender bias, though the incidence is less in transgenders or in males. If you see 300 or 400 women with breast cancer in a year, you may see two, three male or transgenders in a year. So it is that less incidence. However, the treatment remains the same. It is no different. Uh, thank you, Pooja. And apologies to everyone for shooting the time. Uh, we have already crossed the time limit, but we have a lot many questions pouring in. So please stay a bit longer. That will be great. Uh, Harjot Singh, medical officer in charge um, uh, in, uh, from in Amritsar. 
uh, wants to know if we can hold some awareness activity on World Cancer Day with I am and I will campaign in the rural free practice in rural Punjab on 4th of February. And uh, he also wants to know if we can, he, this is a question for uh, Dr. Surikan, if we can run tobacco rehabilitation units at primary health care centers in rural areas of India. So uh, one part of the question is directed to UICC and the other to Dr. Surikan. Uh, should I respond first? Okay. Okay. Uh, my best wishes for doctor from uh, Amritsar, if I remember correctly. Uh, of course, you can uh, organize the program on World Cancer Day. And the second is regarding the rehabilitation. I think the uh, government scheme that is of wellness center, so every wellness center in Ayushman Bharat scheme uh, launched by Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, the latest, latestly. So this will cover the tobacco rehabilitation also, tobacco cessation also. So these wellness center will cover the health education, first aid program, yoga, pranayam, and of course the tobacco session clinic, the diabetes uh, lifestyle uh, education, and of course the various other programs, the preventable programs. So I think uh, this will be in a big way in India through these wellness centers. Okay. Uh, now over to UICC regarding the I am and I will campaign in rural yes, Thank you. Thank you, Sherpa, and thank you, Dr. Singh, for the question. Yes, of course, uh, we encourage all supporters to host, hold, and organize uh, various activities. World Cancer Day is a platform for every supporter to take part in, and we encourage as many people as possible, as many organizations as possible, to, to do something, to raise awareness, to take action. And it really depends on your objectives and what you would like to achieve on the day, whether it's raising awareness, whether it's advocacy, whether it is fundraising. Uh, World Cancer Day provides a global platform where there's a lot of attention around this day and hopefully you can harness that attention to raise awareness in your area and your area of work as well. So we do encourage that. There are plenty of toolkits, so plenty of how-to guides on our website. They're available. Um, uh, freely available on our website so I do encourage uh, you to take a look and see how they can help you with organizing an awareness event in your uh, area okay uh, thank you uh, Zafar from Bangladesh wants to know if uh, chewing tobacco uh, is also responsible or in some way affect lung cancer he says there's a lot of chewing tobacco in Bangladesh, of course, in India too, we have the same problem. So is it only smoking or even other forms of tobacco which impact lung cancer? Uh, no, chewing tobacco can lead to a lot of cancer of oral cavity, the tongue, the, the cheek mucosa, but usually they don't contribute for the lung cancer. It's smoking and of course the air pollution, indoor air pollution, biomass fuel, these are the factors for lung cancer. So tubing can, of course, is a local irritant and that can lead to the local cancer. Okay. Uh, we have a comment from Samuel, a pharmacist from Rwanda. And Samuel says, this is the right time to beat not only cancers, but all NCDs through awareness and management of risk factors. Let us teach our community to take healthy diet, stop or reduce alcohol intake and stop tobacco use. I think that's a very important comment. Yes, very important. And Dr. Papu Sarma, another very noted specialist in his field, says NGOs have a great role to play in creating awareness of cancer. And as Thui remarked, media too has a very important role to play. So, uh, media is already doing. So, what are you already doing? <laughs> no, I think we need a lot more to do, to do in that case. And uh, Avantika, she's another uh, CNS Health Fellow. Uh, she says, decreasing the role of counseling and awareness is perhaps responsible for women not seeking timely treatment of breast cancer. Dr. Pooja Ramakant, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, that is a very pertinent question you have raised. And delay is the most common cause for all the problems, and especially in cancers, and that too, especially in women. I'd like to share just two slides with you. 
Okay, this is a ghastly picture of one of the patients and uh, why women present so late when they can't bear the burden of the cancer, they get maggots, they get fungation, ulceration, bleeding, and then they come. So if we did a study also, and there are a lot of factors, one they are related to patient, another they are related to the doctor-related factors that cause delay. Patient-related delays are because of ignorance. They keep ignoring it because they say it didn't cause any pain. Pain is a good thing because that brings quickly the patient to a doctor, but if it is a lump is painless, they just ignore it for months. Then even if they have, after months, they feel the lump is growing, they may opt for alternate medicines. Then they are worrying about the financial burden, who will bear the cost of treatment. Unfortunately, the treatment in most of the government hospitals is free, so they don't have to pay, but this message is not conveyed to them. They can learn this thing only when they come to us. Then women are hesitant to talk about their body parts, especially breasts, and that too to a male doctor. So that also works as a bird, mm -hmm. as a barrier to um, women presenting early to doctor. Then if the hospital is far off, then who takes care of the travel cost? How do they travel? The distance also matters. Who takes care of the logistics at home? When the kids are back at home, who will take care of the home when they're away for the evaluation? Then if they get a cancer, who's going to bear the treatment cost? Unfortunately, in India, it's a sad scenario. If the lady is married, then the husband sends the women back to their mother's side that, okay, the parents should bear the cost if the woman is not earning. Or miss, there are so many factors, so the emotional, psychological, financial, it's a, just a complex interplay of all these factors which lead her to come late. And then when she presents to the doctor who is a first contract physician, they at the peripheral center, they may not have good diagnostic facilities like good labs, doing an FNAC, needle cytology, or doing a mammogram or ultrasound. So if they may not be able to diagnose cancer, and that leads to late referral to the secondary or the tertiary hospitals. There's lack of coordination between primary health center, secondary, and tertiary. There's no proper channel of coordination of discussing patients. Then there's lack of awareness programs, even among the doctors themselves. So we need to do that also. And then lot lack of support group. When the women presence to the first contact doctor and doctor says that this is a cancer and women just uh, burst out in the emotional scene that uh, she cannot accept that thing and that news breaks the bad news. We don't have support groups, counselors to console her at that point and give her support to bear the further fight with the cancer. So there are many reasons and much more than this goes on and on. However, all these factors are modifiable and we can work out and delete this whole list on both the sides. Thank you for asking this pertinent question. Uh, thank you, uh, Vikram Mohanty, who is Associate Professor in Maulana Azad Medical College, uh, says that uh, tobacco cessation clinics have already been launched in 313 dental colleges in India in collaboration with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Uh, that's a great move, and uh, would uh, Dr. Surikant like to comment on that? Uh, of course, the dental people, especially the people of oral surgery, oral pathology, and oral medicine uh, people, they are having a lot of awareness programs, and of course, the tobacco session clinic uh, uh, running at various dental colleges. And that's a good move because the dentists are very important uh, people, as oral cancer has become the most important cancer for India. So, of course, the oral surgeons, the dental people, dentists, they have to create a lot of awareness regarding this tobacco chewing habits in this country. And if you see the GATS 1 and GATS 2 survey comparison, then, of course, the tobacco consumption has reduced in India, but chewing tobacco form has increased. That's very alarming. So, uh, the smoking, of course, going down in India, but tobacco chewing is still there, and, of course, it is increasing. If you see the good global tobacco adult uh, tobacco survey, uh, a one in comparison to the survey two that is recently uh, released in 2017. So I think uh, we must congratulate to the dental people that they are creating a lot of awareness, and that is the need of the art. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We have already overshot the time by 15 more than 15 minutes. Before we end today's session. Let us remind ourselves that environmental and lifestyle factors, including smoking, unhealthy diet, and lack of exercise are major risk factors and they are avoidable risk factors for cancer. Cancer is an urgent global health challenge. 
and governments must take measures to scale up prevention, early diagnosis, quality treatment. We now come to the close of today's webinar. My sincere thanks to all our panelists for a very enriching discussion. We are grateful to the participants for their engagement with the webinar. And last but not the least, special thanks to our guest moderator, Ashok Ramsuru. As always, the link to the webinar recording and podcast will be shared with all the participants and will soon be available in public domain. Bye and have a restful weekend. Thank you.